All right, so the one for F, um, what I'm gonna do in this case is I got it in place, I made sure the little piece of siding fell behind that little piece of trim there. And instead of screwing down first, what I'm gonna do is since this is already now stationary, this one's already anchored, I'm gonna actually start by screwing this way. Make sure your peaks are lined up, make sure it's flush. And since that one's stationary, I'm gonna let the screws force that one true that way. So as you're gonna see right now. Just like that. That's called working smarter, not harder, I guess. So just go ahead and continue these ones and then screw in those ones. And then once that's all nice and true like that, go ahead down this line, screwing all these in. All right, what we're gonna do right now is put the front run wall on. And again, what we're gonna do in this case is do the two walls separately and then put them together in the middle. Or maybe put them together and do the other corner. Either way, um, so these will be the two walls that are left. You'll notice it's kind of funny opening. That's where your run door is gonna be. So we're gonna start with this side and take two and a half inch screws. And just like all the times before, Get the screw started. Find the existing hole. And then having someone on the outside help you flush it up and then just work your way on down. All right, so after you get that corner screwed in, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and continue on down this way, attaching the wall. Um, you could at this point attach the other corner and then bring this together. I'm gonna try it this way, so take your face clamp. And it doesn't really matter if you start at the bottom or top. Uh, I'm just going to start at the top here. Bring that tight. Put that clamp on there. Remember, be careful these screws because you are going in there very easy to round it out. Go the right way. And then do the same thing at the bottom. Make sure you use your blue coat screws. Rocking this clamp to flush it up. Perfect. Alright, now that you have this wall connected, finish up this last corner. Same thing, start at the top, start the screws. Find the existing hole. And work your way on down. Don't forget your blue coat at the bottom. All right, so we'll take H, put that off up here to our right. From the inside. From the inside. Okay, so in this case for your front run wall gables, we're gonna probably recommend screwing them together this way, make sure everything's lined up perfectly. That way, these two boards come together nice and tight. Got your two screws up here, two on this side, and the two on this side. And then this one is H and G, so we're gonna, this is the inside of the run. We're gonna pick this up and set it right on top. All right, so what we did in this case is we took your gable, screw that together first. It was a very snug fit, um, so you'll notice it's probably gonna be tight and um, just get that to drop down in. Once that's on, that'll draw the outside corners in. And then, um, we'll go ahead and, you know, just maybe start right in the middle. Flush this up right here. All I'm doing is pushing on the outside siding and then driving these screws down. And then just work your way down both ways, flushing it up on the outside. Well, I guess actually more or less flushing up on the inside, pushing this in, flushing that up, and driving all your screws down. All right, what we're gonna show you in this step is the assembly of your trusses. So you're gonna have several um, rafters that look like this. You got the bird's mouth, some notching at the top for your purlins. And um, so the mating, will, the, the one will look like this. And then the other one, we've already glued on the gusset, so you didn't have to do that, kind of save you that step. And um, 
This one, for example, is labeled Hen House Wall 1. Same thing right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna label all your trusses so all the holes match up perfectly. So when you uh, go to match them up, in your kit will be a bottle of glue. So what I recommend for the final assembly of these trusses is to put a little bit of glue on this edge of the gusset here and then up here on this little miter here. So when you find the uh, mating one, go ahead and take your face clamp, start up here at the peak, and line up the points there. Don't forget the glue. And I do like to move the face clamp for each hole. It just helps really flush it up that much better. And then work your way on down to the gusset. So that's going to be the assembly of your trusses. Uh, I think what I'm going to do, we'll call this number one, and then the rest will be two, three, four, five, six. Six, maybe seven. Um, just match them up so that the holes line up perfectly for you. That way it doesn't throw you off. And don't forget your glue. Very, very important to glue this right here and there. All right, what we're going to do is start talking about uh, the assembly of your roofing system here. And so what I would do first is grab, you're going to have four pieces. Uh, we call them fillers, and then there's going to be four that have the holes in it. The ones with the holes are for ventilation inside your head house. Uh, so maybe grab those four, there's going to be two on each side. And in this case, uh, every one is numbered, so again, they find the existing holes. So this is seven over here and eight, and this is number eight. And it's very critical uh, to understand how to make it easier for you. So for example, uh, we want to be very systematic on how we put our screws in. So like right now, in this particular case, and it may not be the same thing for you out there, um, in this case, we want to use the screws to our advantage. So seeing that this is right now sitting up there and it's not perfectly tight against this uh, gable part, that might be okay, it may not. But what I want to do is, uh, there's going to be two screws going that way, three going down, okay, and then two more going that way. I'm going to flush this up. I'm going to start going this way. Okay, that's a good case in point. So what that did is that just drew it tight. So that's going to help true it up. So I'm going to put the other screw in. It kind of kicked it out over here, but not a big deal at all. I'm not worried about that. So I want to do is get that nice and tight. So now that just drew that purlin. I'm sorry, the uh, filler piece over where I wanted it to. And then now I'm just going to come back over here. I'm going to flush this up. With a screw. And then go ahead and put these next two in. And actually, to make it even easier, uh, we're going to go right down in a row filler truss, filler truss, filler truss. It'll actually make your life a lot easier. So we got number eight in. I'm going to come over here to number nine. This actually looks real good. Um, so I guess you could do the same thing. Start with the lateral. Get those two screws in. And then work with your three screws going down. Flush it up. And if it tries to move on you as those screws go in, that's okay. Let the screws find those existing holes. And then now, Once you got all those screws in, now we're going to go grab a truss, drop that in instead of trying to fit it in between the filler. So we're going to go grab your hen house truss. All right, so now we got these two fillers in. We're going to start with your one truss. Uh, in this case, I'm going to number it one. Um, this is actually going to be the only one that's a little bit different. You'll notice it doesn't have varnish here only because it's on the inside of your hen house. Either way, um, on your filler pieces, you got two screws going this way into the truss. And then with this filler piece, you're going to have one screw going that way. So we want to match up those holes. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to number them on this side so that you have each truss going in the right direction. Either way, so to make this easier on you, what I would do is after you get your fillers in, we're going to actually screw the truss to the filler. And it's very important to remember when you do this, your bird's mouth is right here. Make sure that's all the way over and tight. And then go ahead and put the two screws in laterally on this side. And then you can hop on the other side. You're gonna do the same exact thing. And then this is when it's really, really important to make sure your bird's mouth are exactly uh, 96 inches apart. So that's gonna true up the wall. So in this case, there's a little room there. I wanna push this out against that bird's mouth. So I know that I'm truing up the wall. Once it's out against it, go ahead and screw that in. So once you get number 10 seated in there, what I'm gonna do is uh, make sure it's all the way down and flush. But I'm gonna draw it that way truss and then go back over to this end flush that up and screw it down okay and then do your remaining two screws and then after you get them in then you can draw the hen house towards this filler now if this is too tight at this point where it won't fit in between the hen house don't be afraid to unscrew that hen house from earlier and just push it out a little bit to get this filler in. Keep it loose. And then you can go ahead and screw in this filler piece of that hen house wall, drawing it tight to the filler. And that just helps true it all up. And then you do the same exact thing on the other side. So what I recommend you do is um, Start in front of your hen house, in this case we're going to start with number six. And I'm not going to screw down at all until the whole thing is together. And the reason for that is I want to draw everything tight before we anchor it down. So grab number 11. Screw that in laterally. Okay, so you get those two fillers in. Uh, grab your face clamp, flush up filler to that top plate and then grab this is number two so match number two to number two and then screw in laterally this way make sure your filler is all the way down make sure your bird's mouth is tight and put in both those screws Take your face clamp off and then do the same thing over here. And if you got to rock that a little bit, push that filler piece down, make sure you do that. Put in your two lateral screws. Make sure your bird's mouth is tight. Alright, so what we're going to do is just keep repeating the same steps. The next one's going to be number five. And again, we're not anchoring down yet. We want to be able to draw everything tight first. So I'm just going to face clamp that. Put in a single lateral screw. And then continue all the way down to that far end, matching everything up. And then we'll come back once everything's seated down on top of the floor. Screw everything down. All right, at this point, you should have all your filler pieces in. And again, it's recommended uh, you haven't screwed down yet. And, and you probably may have seen, um, at this point, you may have had to shimmy some things around. Hopefully you didn't. We didn't just now, but again, when it gets out there, who knows, wood can move and change, and the ground might be different. Either way, once everything's locked in laterally, now you go back down and um, push things in and out, get the bird's mouth flushed up, you know, like right here, uh, and then start screwing down. And work your way from one end down to the other, just pushing that out, okay, and screwing down, and keep going down, and keep going down, and keep going down, and that'll lock everything together. And then uh, you'll be ready for your purlins.